Welcome everybody to the Selling Sense series. I am so excited to talk tonight about utilizing the tools uh, of the trade. So here we go. I'm pretty sure everybody knows who I am. Um, this is my cute little page here that explains who I am, how many years in the business I have been, and if you wanna stop the video and read a little bit about me, that's cool, I won't stop you. Um, but for the sake of the fact that you're probably watching this after you've watched a couple of my videos, I will move on and start the class. So what is our overview? So today we are going to learn how to leverage our time and organize our schedules while giving our best experience to our clients. We will talk about tools and techniques to collect info from our clients and keep us on track for our goals. Um, anybody that is going to hop on tonight, you know, I can absolutely separately talk with you and check in with you on how we're doing with our goals and see what shifts that we're going to need to make to hit those goals. So, cause this is our time, you know, to talk about our goals and really work with each other and learn and grow and become better as the year goes on. We are going to go over our part over. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is we're gonna make sure that our A clients have been recognized in our database. So I'm not sure if you saw uh, the first week that I did, but I went over um, all of the clients that I basically like, you know, are your A clients, which are gonna be the people that you know for a fact would refer you. Um, the people that are really great in your network that would be comfortable referring you. Um, and I just want to really focus on those people tonight because we're going to be working on leveraging the, all of those tools that I'm going to be talking about based off of your A clientele, those graded people. So number two, we're going to talk about integrating all the lead sources into your CRM if possible. And Thankfully, you know, we at Veracone Real Estate, uh, we do have a great CRM that integrates all of those lead sources like Zillow and the things that come off of our website and uh, HomeBot and all those things. So that's really great just to keep everything all in one place. So that's number two. Um, number three, we're going to find out what our best opportune times are for calling clients and then also our follow up. And if you can't and that's if you can't reach them the first time that you call. Number four, we're going to create a pre-buyer consultation form to send our buyer clients. And number five, we're going to set up a time to speak with our clients in person or on Zoom for our actual consultation. And number six, we're going to utilize a drip campaign to send curated homes to your buyer clients and home bots for homeowners. So we can't just like focus on buyers or sellers. We have to do both. And uh, number seven, the last one here is understand your client needs and shift your business brand awareness based off of the collected data. So then let me just move this out of here for one second. Um, I want to make sure that I have my computer plugged in really quick. I know I have my... just yelled at me and said that I was going to die. So we don't want that. I think that's charging now. I hope so. Um, all right, just keep going. So the next one we're gonna talk about. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is we are going to be doing database grading. So when we grade our database, we, sorry, we grade our database so that we know who is in there. And then we make sure that we know who we're targeting as our A clients. Just like I said, we talked about this in the first week. So if we need a recap, we can always go back to that first class that we did to talk about if we're confused or we're not really sure how to have a clients. Next, we are going to integrate all the lead sources into our CRM. 
depending on where you get your leads from, having them all in one place and tagged will be, make being organized a whole lot easier. So yes, we're integrating everything in there, but we're really not sure, you know, if we're really not sure like where that lead came from, Zillow, Homebot, like all these things, like we have to tag them to make sure that we know like, okay, this came from here, this came from here. It helps you be super organized when you have to get to the closing table and you have to make sure you know who to pay. And then understand that the leads that are not direct referrals, uh, those leads, the Zillow paid at close leads need the most touches to build trust. So the people that you're getting from your referral, you know, space where they're a friend of a friend who, you know, was referred to you, they already kind of have that know, like, and trust you mentality of like, oh, wow, this person that I love just recommended this realtor to me. So they already have a little bit of trust already established with these people that are just kind of calling in off the internet. They have no idea who you are. So it's really important to have more touches with those people that really don't know you all that well yet so that they can build that trust. Next, we're going to talk about organizing our schedule. Schedule your calls and follow-ups with clients. I find that if I put that in my schedule, regardless of if I actually have a call with a client, it really helps me to stay on track to make sure that I at least have a time set aside in my schedule to call them. And then if they don't pick up, I can check my phone again and make sure that I follow up with them if they got back to me. Phone calls and messages are lead generating activities. So we wanna make sure that they're in your calendar no matter what. We also want to, if someone is qualified as a serious buyer or seller, make sure that you set that appointment with them. That is our end goal is to make sure that there is an appointment and we need to use our CRM or our schedule or whatever it is that you turn to when you are talking about your client follow-up and your client appointments, it has to be in there. So kind of having that in the back of your mind every single time you're having a conversation with someone who could be a potential buyer or seller, make sure that you get an appointment with them, get in front of them and it doesn't have to be in person, but Zoom is just as good. Okay, next you're gonna create your pre-buyer or seller questionnaires. This has been such a game changer for me. I started doing this probably last year um, after being in the business for a few years. And just the fact that people were more willing to talk to me via a questionnaire and do it on their own, it was huge because then their answers get submitted to me and I have a whole lot more insight, even if I've never met them personally, into what I need to talk about and what specifically I need to ask questions about because I have their, their answers to the questions that are in there. I use JotForm, I've used Google Forms before. Either is great. I really don't think that there is any like right or wrong answer here, as long as you can copy and paste a link and send it to your buyer or seller. Uh, people have created forms already. You can copy them, paste them, tweak them to make it your own. I really have to stress that you have to make sure that any and all questions are asked uh, that are asked are compliant. Um, there were a couple of things that I saw on one that I copied over one time that, you know, they were asking about, you know, fair housing, you know, non-compliant things. And it was just, you know, just to keep our own butt safe, if anybody ever, God forbid, like saw this, you just, you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to have anything be non-compliant. Um, and then copy those question links and send them to each client individually. That's just like what I said at the beginning of this page, but, you know, just want to stress it. Like, the fact that it's so easy to copy and paste a link and people can just click on it and you get all the information that you need up front, it's, it's a game changer. Next, prepare for your actual consultation. So just like I just said, use the answers given in the questionnaire to guide your consultation. Ask for further clarification from your clients and build that relationship. Ask for permission to add your client to automated tools. If it's a, if it's a homeowner now, you know, uh, and they're trying to sell their house to buy another house. That means they're a seller and a buyer and you can add them to HomeBot and they can watch how their home equity grows as they're on that uh, automated tool. Um, you can also, you know, just again, it's really nice to ask permission. If you've got like an automated drip campaign or something like that, which we're gonna talk about soon um, in one of the next slides here, um, you know, it's nice for them to see something every day or every other day or whenever a new house comes on the market that would be tailored to their needs, 
but we have to ask permission. Then ask your client how much communication that they need during the week and schedule that accordingly. I think it's really, so this is a real thing that just happened to me where um, I had a client reach out to me. Um, it was a referral from somebody else, one of my other friends from growing up. And they said they had been to, through two real estate agents that did not talk to them directly at all. They did not have, they had very poor communication. And the fact that I had sent them a questionnaire already, the fact that I was setting up a time to meet with them and talk about their needs and see if they had any houses that they had already been interested in as well, that alone for them in just three messages was enough for her to say, you know what, you're the real estate agent that I want to work with. Simply because I heard her pain point and I was already acting upon it to make sure that I had enough information about her to help her with her home buying journey. So, you know, asking them how they want to be treated is going to be the best step in your building that trust in that relationship, regardless what kind of client it is. Oh, uh, I think this is number five, but using automated tools. So just like I was just talking about, using the MLS and tools like Homebot are key to building awareness and keeping you top of mind. Automation means that your face, name, brand is going to be there every single day or every single week or every single month. And you don't have to think about it until you need to follow up with that client. It's things that are going on in the background that you can use to leverage your time so that you don't have to constantly be thinking about each individual client. Because I know some of us are going to have 10, 20 clients at a time, and we need to make sure that each of them are being taken care of. So in the time when you physically cannot be 20 places at once, use these automated tools. Automated drip campaigns allow your clients to see homes as they first hit the market from a platform that is curated by you with your name attached. That is the key. HomeBot allows the homeowners in your market to see how their home worth has been affected by the current market. Utilize these tools to make sure that you are associated with the most up-to-date market info. Specifications for shifting your brand. So this is the last, this is actually number seven. So now that you know who you're serving and what their needs are, try to keep this in mind when you're posting on your social media platforms. If you're working with mostly buyers, what is important to them? Post about that. Get that in front of their face and make sure that just like last week when we talked about how to curate your social media, Make sure that the people that you are actively working with, as well as the people that you're trying to attract and get into your sphere of influence so that you can put them in the funnel and get them to be a buyer or seller someday, they all matter. And this part with this week, we're talking about making sure that your buyers and sellers feel seen when they go to your social media because they're trying to see what you're up to outside of what you're doing with work. If they see something that's like, oh my gosh, we have a buyer. It's in Sarah, you know, the buyers in Saratoga County, they're or Clifton Park, they're looking up to $500,000. That could be me. And then they feel even more connected to your page. So just things like that. Then it's like, you know, if you have mostly sellers, what are they struggling with? Speak to their needs and captivate that audience. If you've got a seller who's struggling with the fact that they just, unfortunately lost this deal that just broke apart because they've got this inspection that happened and three things came up. Talk to your sellers and say, you know, through your platform and say, you know, when it comes to your, um, you know, these things that pop up on the inspections, why don't we do, you know, some sort of uh, pre-inspection, so, you know, for the next sellers well, and, and educate those sellers on, hey, it's not the end of the world. It just means that this wasn't the right buyer for you and speak to that pain point in a video, in a live video where people can see your face. And then, you know, the next seller that comes in is like, wow, she really knows how to handle that objection. She really knows how to understand, you know, what to do next, even in the face of a really hard situation. And again, all of this is going to build trust and it's also going to show your seller like, hey, maybe I'm not the only one that has gone through this. You know, it seems like she has a lot of background on this because she's able to speak so confidently about it on her public social media page. Building your brand on what you're actively working on, it's just like this entire page that I've been on. 
you're trying to make sure that you're speaking intelligently to the things that you're actually dealing with because that is real life. So much of social media is packaged and put together with a little bow and it's not, it doesn't feel real. So when you are actively talking about the real situations that you're going through, not only are your buyers and sellers going to catch on and be like, wow, she's talking about me. The future buyers and sellers are going to say, wow, she's super intro- it, like into this market and she's doing so many things and she has so much content to put out because she is working actively in what I'm trying to get into. I want to work with her. Closing remarks, what does your broker provide that would help you execute a lead generation and follow-up strategy like these ones? What is stopping you from starting today? How could this plan be changed at all to make you feel the most confident that you would start gaining more information and conversations within your database? And please let us know if you have any other questions or if we can help further. So, since you are the, the only other person on the call, Anastasia, did you have any questions about, you know, the class or any of the tools that I brought up or, you know, anything that you're struggling with right now? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, maybe a silly one. Uh, so what are the tools that can help us with the um, email campaigns in the, sen in the sense of, to all the contacts, not only to the active sellers, but maybe previous uh, sellers, previous buyers, all the, like, do we have a tool in our brokerage that can help us do like the, oh my God, my brain is not raining, like a campaign, like an emailing campaign. What I would do, how I would go about that is I would make sure that I have all of the emails for my A buyers and B buyers, because like those are the people that I really focus on. Um, those are the ones that I want to talk to on a daily basis. Like those are my very close people in my, you know, network that I want to make sure that they know, you know, and they hear from me uh, very often. Um, and I think the only way to go about that of grasping those emails is just going to be to talk to them. So like setting up time in your schedule to call those people and get those emails. And then what I do is I go into follow up boss and I actually, um, basically organize my entire database only by those A people or B people. And then it shows me just that curated list of those people. And then I just select all and I send an email to all of those people that could be like, I don't know, like a newsletter. If you wanted to be like pretty creative on your own about that, um, you could do, you know, um, if there's certain information that you want all of those people to hear, because this is what you're doing right now, just in a regular email format, um, you can definitely and certainly do that as well. Um, but it creates that list of email, like all the emails of all those people by actually going in and sorting those people by that one singular tag. Got it. So follow up boss is our tool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I don't I've mind actually... my children screaming in the background. <laughs> That's okay. Listen, <laughs> when I when I was like trying to get on here first, my kids were screaming. So, you know, um, but but yeah, I mean, I've I've actually done that before. Um, with follow up boss, I had to send out an email to um all of the builders that I had in my database and I've tagged them previously. So when I added everything to follow up boss, it's still carried over that that was a tag for those people. So I clicked my builder tab, you know, that I had tagged everybody with and I sent out an email to every single builder that I had. So, you know, it does definitely work that way and it is fairly simple. I'm sure that Marley or Lauren, if you struggle with that, or even myself, I'm happy, you know, I'm, pretty much at the office almost every day now because I've been really working my business. Thank you. So, um, I'm happy to sit down with you and work on that with you. If you know, I'm sure they're available, but I am also. I would love that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so just two of us. Thank you. I appreciate the offer. Yeah, no problem. So, so yeah, I mean, that was great. That's a great question. So I think, you know, just learning more about the tools that we do have at our fingertips. Um, I know, you know, uh, the past two weeks I've had, new people on here that aren't necessarily in Vera Cohen. So like, I'm trying to help people understand like, hey, we, you know, 
maybe we have something that's a little bit different over here at Eric Cohen that is going to be able to benefit you. Or if it's like a brand new person, I've kind of been trying to speak to the fact that like, hey, these are the things that you should be looking for in a brokerage when it comes to starting your real estate career, you know? So I'm, I've asked on my uh, stories, like on my Instagram stories, um, for any agent to at, like give me basically a, a topic that they would be interested to learn about or listen to when it comes to a training. And um, I got like fair, a fair amount of responses from agents, like, because it doesn't matter if they're with our brokerage or not. I think it's really important that we understand that we're all in this together. And there are certain things that matter to real estate agents and there's certain things that don't matter. So we kind of have to sift through and figure that out and make sure that we're in the right place and we can grow where we're planted. 